in my last video, I was showing you some things that'll be really helpful for undoing some of the back of the body tension from sitting that brings you to a place where your low back is feeling rather undone. And by now you know that sitting in a tucked tail is not helpful. One of the things that happens, I'll just show you really quickly right here, is if you spend time not on top of your sits bones, but like so, this rounded long-term action means that when you try to stand up, these muscle fibers feel very unsafe elongating again. So that's part of the problem. So sitting on top of your sits bones is a really good way to not put your lumbar spine in a vulnerable position for a long period of time. Then the next thing is, what do we do when we've worked uh, constantly and maybe every time you get up, you do a little calf stretch. We've been working on elongating the muscles back here and adding a little bit more activity to our bum, which has been squished all day long. So next thing that we're going to do is layer on. So the first thing I'm going to do, since I'm already up on top of a block, is I'm going to talk about things you can do while seated at your desk that help your whole upper body feel more mobility because you're kind of stuck here. So number one, how about you get those elbows to stop being here, which means that you're internally rotated, which just adds to that text and computer posture. How about we externally rotate here? Now, if I keep my hands like this and I externally rotate up here and I just let my hands come with me, this is where I am. I can't really type here, but guess what? We have lower arms that move. So if I go from here and I open up and my hand is here, I can draw the elbow in a bit and turn my hand down. So that sounds really complicated. Let's look at it this way. You're here, you have ice cream scoops on your elbows. You take those ice cream scoops, you scoop up some ice cream and you put your hands down on the computer. Just give it a try. You've got a much more open shoulder girdle without following that horrid cue of squeeze your shoulder blades together. That's just tension on tension and doesn't change what your spine is doing. So externally rotate your upper arm is my number one gift for the day. It'll go a long way to help you. Another thing is find your collarbone, find the soft spot beneath your collarbone. And instead of doing all sorts of lovely quote unquote heart opening or chest lifting, we don't want to lift the ribs. Let's just open this little soft spot that we could call your ribeye. So if we open the ribeye, I just feel a very gentle drawing longer collarbones, the pointed part, the acromion process right here is all of a sudden wanting not to point at this angle, but maybe a little bit more to the side, not totally, but eventually. And we're only looking for 10% change. Never go for more than 10%. You're bound to be disappointed and you could hurt yourself. So just 10% changes. Next thing we're going to do is practice moving those shoulder blades. So imagine the instruction to reach across your body with your arm. You pretty much think of your hand. You see your hand going. What if without moving our pelvis, we're seated, it's nice and steady, we thought about the shoulder blade wrapping around and it's that wrapping around that gets the arm to reach. So I'm now motivated up here again, reaching, 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 and I come back. So now I'm gonna do this, let's say you do it five or six times and you sort of do it in slow motion, like you're going through a really thick jar of molasses and you're trying to reach through the molasses to grab something you really want. How about a gold coin? So I feel tingling and stretching and then I do the other side. Sometimes you might wanna hold your rib cage. 
you're really working on moving that scapula, that angel wing, you're moving it and it allows your arm to reach. And without you really knowing it much, you're getting the tiniest amount of rotation all the way up here. Very, very tiny. And the best thing about tiny things like that, you don't notice it, but it's doing you a world of good. And once you've done that, we're just going to take our arms out to the side and turn our palms up and turn the thumbs as far back as we possibly can towards the ground behind us. And then go the other way, the thumbs go to the ground again and maybe to the wall behind me. Next time I'm going to rotate, I'm thinking about my elbow pits. My elbow pits go up to the ceiling and I see if I can get them to roll back behind me. Then my elbow pits come down to the floor and I see if they can roll back behind me. And then I travel up right to my shoulder and now I'm not thinking about anything but the arm bone all the way up at the shoulder. So maybe there's less movement in my hand. I think you can see there certainly is in mine. And I'm just moving at my upper arm. Much less movement, but I really feel my muscles working and doing that movement. And then when I'm all done, I finish off with two stop signs. And zing! You might feel that. It might be really awesome and tingly. And then I do the same thing, but point the fingers down. And then I shake it all out and get back to work with my elbows, having done my ice cream scoop, and I'm ready to go. After that, we're going to do a little something for our bum. So we're going to come down to the floor and we're going to do bridging. Everybody's all time favorite thing to do. So the bridge I want you to do is think about just a neutral bridge. We're not articulating the spine. We're just open and close right here at the hip crease. So that place where your pants crease when you're seated at the desk. I want your feet right below your sitting bones. Your hands can be on the ground, but we're really, we could have our hands up here. We're working on the bum being the elevator. So not the hamstrings or the calves. If you feel them, then possibly you feel the calves if you're pushing your feet away from you. You feel the hamstrings if you're pulling your heels towards you. If you push your heels straight down and imagine your bum is the elevator, you're then working your glutes. And you can do, let's say, 20 of these. This is a great interruption to your sitting time. You can also put weight here and do the same thing. You can also put a block or a ball in between your thighs and squeeze it while doing the same thing. You can also put a resistance band around the outside and press into it and do the same thing. So there's a lot of different things you can do using this bridge to build your glutes up. So that is part of my prescription for getting yourself out of lower back pain is let's not let your lower back do movement that other parts of your body should be doing. Get those other parts a little more active. Get more activity for your upper back, your thoracic spine, more activity for your glutes. Let's find length in the back of your legs and let them do some of the work too. And your lower back will thank you.